Well, hello everybody. I found this old Macintosh Plus at eWaste. Um, it's pretty yellowed and it's also dead as a doornail when I turn it on. Can I get it to work? Well, you're going to find out right now on the Retro Hack Shack. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, yes, indeed, I did find this Macintosh Plus at eWaste, and um, it came with us some other stuff that I got as well, and it came with a tub full of keyboards and stuff, and inside the tub was this keyboard and this mouse here. When I found the mouse, I kind of wrote this off because I looked at it, and it was missing the ball and the little um, uh, plastic piece that goes in there to keep the ball in place. And guess what? I was rummaging through the bottom of that tub, and sure enough, I found the ball and the little plastic piece. So that goes in like that. And eventually this will click into place. There's a little marker here for kind of a, uh, to be able to identify how to plug this in. There's a, a line and a circle. And there's also a line and a circle on the, uh, uh, there's a circle anyway on the little plastic piece. So you put that in, slide it over, and now this is locked. And hopefully this will work. We'll see. But one of the reasons I wanted to get this was because I have a friend that's moving out of town. I wanted to get him something for a go, uh, going away present. And I know he's got a Macintosh Plus that is missing the keyboard and mouse. So I was really excited to see the keyboard and mouse here in this set that I got from eWaste. But I don't know if it works. And when I pulled out the Macintosh Plus that I have uh, here in the uh, Hack Shack, it was not working either. It wouldn't turn on. It was doing the power loop thing. So it's got a power supply issue or a short somewhere that's causing it to loop. Um, but this one was also from eWaste. And when I turned this on at eWaste to test it, uh, it did not turn on at all. But I need a Macintosh Plus to be able to make sure that the keyboard and mouse that I'm giving to my friend who's leaving town actually works. I don't want to send him away with one that doesn't work. So what I thought I'd do today is take this Macintosh Plus um, and see if I can get it working. If I can, then I can test out the keyboard and mouse. So all of this kind of goes together. Now these are very yellowed, um, as is, you know, kind of traditional. You can kind of see the, the difference there in the underside and the top side of the mouse, for example. So if I was keeping these, I would definitely be retro brighting these. I would be taking the whole keyboard apart and cleaning off all of the keys on this keyboard. Um, and trying to do something with the Macintosh, either tearing it apart and doing a retro bright, doing the sun bleaching or something like that. Um, also, you'll notice this says number one on it. And that was just because this was part of a set. There was like five or six things that were part of this set at eWaste. And, uh, this was just labeled number one. So you can take that off. Um, but I'll come back to the price and what I paid for this whole setup in uh, probably the latter half of the episode. But for now, let's move the keyboard and mouse out of the way and open up this Macintosh Plus. Hopefully this is an easy fix and I can test out this keyboard and mouse for my friend here. And just to test this one more time, maybe I had a bad power cable or something at eWaste. That would be great, wouldn't it? Powered it on. Yeah, so if I listen closely, this is doing the exact same thing that my other uh, Macintosh Plus is doing, which is the power, uh, I can hear the power supply cycling, click, 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 click. So um, definitely some sort of power supply issue, a short or something like that, um, that's causing this to, uh, to not work. Hopefully it's not some really bad corrosion or something. So the first thing I need to do to crack this open, oh, wait a second. Somebody may have been in here before. Um, because this Velcro looks like is already cut in half. So it's possible that somebody had tried to get in here and work on this. Let me unplug this. And the first thing I want to do is check the battery compartment and see if there is a battery in here. That would be a bad thing. Oh, and there is. There is definitely a battery and it is definitely corroded. Probably should go from the top, but that's where the where all the corrosion is. Okay, yeah. You can see there all the all the corrosion on that side. Actually, that's not bad. I mean, there's yes, there's corrosion, but you know what? Um, that's not the worst I've seen. So there'll be some corrosion on this terminal as well, but 
that's actually not too bad. I'm that can clean up pretty easily. I'm not too upset about that unless the corrosion has gone from this terminal up here to the inside of the board somehow. And in case anyone is wondering, this is not a standard battery. This is a 4.5 volt energizer battery. It looks like a double A, but it's actually uh, uh, quite a bit beefier than a double A. Next thing I want to do is see if I can take off. It's nice that this is here, these little switches. I want to take off these switches if I can and uh, preserve these. The reason you want to take these out is because if you open up this case, without taking this out um, and try to uh, uh, pull it off, it's very easy to break these. These are pretty brittle and they're really easy to break. So it's always best to take these off first. And this is a T15 torque wrench. You might be asking, why is that so long? Well, there's some screws that are up here and this is longer than it needs to be, but I just happened upon this set and I'm like, you know what? I'm sure I could use a long torque wrench for something else. So I just went ahead and got these really long ones. They're like for automotive and stuff like that. But they do come in handy with these Macs for getting these, these bolts out because they go all the way to the front, these screws. Um, generally, there we go. Once you know where these are, um, like I can do this without looking in there anymore. I kind of know, know where those screws are by feel. So that makes it easier as well. I think I forgot to take the battery, the one here by the battery uh, door. I guess I'm not used to having to take that one off. I'm used to working on SEs and things. There we go. Now let's see if we can get it off. Okay, there's the front. There we go. Just jiggle it a little bit, you can get it off. Now I have to mention, before you work on anything with a CRT inside like this Mac, you need to know what you're doing. Do not work inside um, CRTs without having done this previously and knowing the risks involved. You can get an absolutely nasty shock, I think it's uh, north of 11,000 volts from the CRT. Um, and when you're, this is such an enclosed space, when you're working in and around here, it's very easy to come in contact with things that you shouldn't. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't attempt this repair at home. So things are definitely a little dusty in here, but they're not bad, actually. The motherboard looks pretty clean. So I'm not seeing any leaky caps or anything. The corrosion on this battery terminal is not bad. It hasn't gotten through to the back. So I can clean that up and neutralize that corrosion. Um... But what I am a little concerned about is the solder joints where the uh, connections go. They can crack over time, and so they may need to just be touched up. I mean, that could be all it is. But yeah, just at first glance, everything looks pretty good. Okay, so I know you can't see it, but I've disconnected the main board. Let's just see if the power supply is still clicking when I turn it on. Oh, yeah. In fact, it's clicking even faster. So something is definitely wrong uh, up here on the uh, on the power supply part. Well, here's the analog board, and there's the uh, date up there at the top, uh, 1986 for this this particular board. And I just love Apple's old logos for both Macintosh and Apple. Uh, quite unique at this time. Speaking of logos and fonts, look at that uh, logo on the um, flyback transformer, Monotron or Monotron. Um, that is just cool looking. It uh, it looks kind of like a System 70 font. Um, you would have seen that on the older uh, Computer Chronicles episodes when they first opened. I think you would have seen um, that font. But yeah, that just looks really cool. Also, danger, high voltage. I'm just looking at the board again, I don't see a whole lot of problems. But one place I want to inspect is right down here in the corner. As I've said before on this channel... Um, down where the power comes in, you'll often find reefa caps, and there are certainly three of them in there. And if I hold this at the right angle and stick my tongue out a bit, you might be able to see that these reefa caps are cracked. There's three of them in there, and the one that I'm worried about is that X one. Um, but the Y class ones, uh, they could also have problems. I'm kind of seeing some damage there too, but definitely want to replace that X one there. Uh, the one that says X, get that out of there or replace it. And then, you know, perhaps that's the only issue with this board. 
So I'll have to take the the uh, protective coating or coating shield off the back here and get out the uh, desoldering iron and rip out those caps. Well, I've just caused my own problem here, as you can see. Here's the pad that lifted right off when I went to uh, to desolder this. Should be able to get out that cap, though. So that is one messed up reefa cap, for sure. It's all cracked here on the top. Definitely should not look like that. In fact, should look like that. So there we are, brand new and old one side by side. And what I can do is when I put this reefer cap back in, the, the leads are pretty long here. So what I'll do where that pad was missing is I'll just bend this, one of these leads over to make the connection that it needs to make through the board uh, to the other pad. So that shouldn't be a big deal. And it's a bit debatable if you even need to replace these. Obviously, um, if this was the, if this is the problem and this was causing that power supply to reset because of the way that this failed, um, then yeah, obviously you have to take this out, but do you need to put another one back in? Well, not really, but I'm going to. And the reason why, actually I should put something else in besides these reefers, um, because in another 40 years, this will have to be replaced again. Um, but the reason I'm putting it back in is because I do run occasionally some other like TVs and things like that, that might be running on the same circuit at the same time as this Mac. And so, yeah, if I don't put this on this filter cap back in, there could be some noise that either comes in or goes out through the line that affects something. It's unlikely if this is the only thing you're running, it's unlikely to happen, but I could be running multiple things here in the, in the shack. So I definitely want to replace this with something, but I should probably replace it with a uh, more modern style capacitor. But this is what I have. So I'll just put this in, see if we can get it working. And this is the one that I was talking about. There's a trace right here underneath this leg. And uh, here, I'll move this and you can see it. See that trace right there? So all I'm going to do just follow where that trace goes right over to this connection over here and solder it directly. Now, I think I mentioned cracked solder joints before, um, and when I was just getting ready to do a search for cracked solder joints before I even flip this back over, take a look at it. Look what I see here. I don't know if you can see that. Very brown connector here, which is a telltale sign that there's been some arcing and things going on here. And if you look down here where that plugs in, it's also brown and looks like it's been arcing. And when there's arcing, there can also be oxidation. So let's flip this over and see if there's an issue right there on the board. Maybe there's a cracked solder joint where this connector plugs in. I'm not sure if this will come across on camera, but sure enough, this pin is fairly well oxidized. So I think this was probably the, the problem and not necessarily the, uh, uh, the reefer cap, although it's good to change that out anyway. But I bet this is the actual problem. So I'm gonna reflow all of these here. I'll also take a look and probably reflow all of these along where the flyback um, transformer is and probably these along the connector, although they look pretty good. But basically anywhere where there could be stress, anywhere where there's a connector plugged in with stress on the wire, things like that, that's what you're looking for. Um, and especially some of these bigger joints here, like around the flyback transformer, that's pretty heavy. And uh, it can crack those joints. And once they get cracked, you can get that arcing. So yep, I'll reflow all those. And then we can check this out and see if it's working. Okay, so before I put this back together, I just wanted to look at the main board. Everything seems to look okay here. You can see the one meg of RAM that's installed here. Looks like this is a standard uh, 68,000. It's a P8, so it's a standard uh, eight megahertz, I believe that means. And uh, what else, anything else uh, notable? Oh yeah, up here, there's a dead, dead bug right there that looks like he got trapped in there. Maybe, maybe he got fried by a little bit of voltage there in between those two pins, so. Anyway, I'm going to give this a little bit of a brush and then uh, we'll put it back in. All right. Well, I think I'm at the point where I can go ahead and plug this in. Now, I have to be really careful. I haven't put on the, the danger shield um, 
back on here. I'll do that in a little bit, but I'm a little worried that I'm going to have to fix some other things. So I'm just going to be really careful around this side of the board because this is all live mains volt or not all of it, but uh, there is live mains voltage there. Anyway, here we go. I heard the drive move, but we're not getting high voltage on the screen. But I did hear the drive try to move. So I'm going to turn this off and we'll see if uh, see if we get an image. Oh, wait, maybe the brightness is turned down. Let's turn it back on. I'm not getting a bong, though. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. It's working. Look at that. Cute little Mac. Okay, I've adjusted the synchro scan here, so hopefully that will not be scrolling so much on you. But yeah, and I can hear the I can hear the floppy drive trying to work. Let's see if that'll go in there. Oh yeah, it will. Did it go down? Yep. Folks, we have a rescued Macintosh Plus brought to eWaste, saved by me. And now we need to see if the keyboard and mouse work. But yeah, totally working. Now, the thing that I notice is not working is the speaker. So I need to go back and see if I can hook up the speaker. But this is working good enough that I can test out the keyboard and mouse. Okay, the keyboard and mouse is now connected. So unfortunately, the mouse would move up and down, but it would not move left and right. It seemed like the horizontal control was not working on this mouse. So it seemed like it needed a little repair. So I went and got this other mouse. It's a little bit newer, even though they look almost identical. And this one does work flawlessly. So there's no problem with the Mac itself. So this one needs a little bit of repair. I'll ask my friend whether he wants to do that or if he wants me to do it but at least he's got the mouse one way or the other now. Now, a while ago, I bought a box of 100 floppy disks and they were all Mac disks. So for example, here's a Mac write disk. They're all, they're all copies of other people's disks. This person didn't buy any software of their own. Uh, but anyway, I thought we could use this to test the keyboard out if it works. Actually, while this is loading, I've got to say the, the floppy drive for being a little bit dirty is actually working flawlessly. Um, motor, the mechanism is working smoothly, no writing or, or reading problems with the heads, even though I haven't cleaned the heads yet. So I'm kind of, kind of impressed with that part of it. Okay, MacWrite is finally loaded, so let's just do a quick test. Looks like everything's working so far. Oh, that was my fault. That wasn't the keyboard. Backspace is working. Caps Lock is on. Aha! There we go. A little sticky there, but no problems. It uh, definitely, the keyboard seems to be working, so I think we are in good shape. All right, well, there you have it. One working Macintosh Plus, and the keyboard seems to work. Like I said, that seems to work fine. A little bit of a problem with the mouse, but I think I can fix that for my buddy that's leaving. And now he has a complete system, Macintosh Plus. He has the keyboard, he has the mouse. It all should be working just fine. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Quick fix. A lot of times that's what it is, with, especially with these uh, Macintoshes. Not always, but especially Macintoshes of this vintage. There's no um, aluminum electrolytic caps really to go wrong. A lot of times it's just connection issues or problems with those uh, reefa caps when they blow. And uh, you check those things out, you know, nine times out of ten you'll be able to fix these if they're dead and not working. So I can't complain at all. Now, on to the price. I forgot to mention, how much did I pay for this Macintosh Plus uh, at eWaste? Well, I paid a grand total of $10. So there you go. $10 find at eWaste, non-working, fixed it in about an hour. And uh, looks like everything's working. I will get the speaker working um, outside of this uh, episode here. No big deal there. Don't want to take up time with that, but I will get the speaker working on this and then everything will be good and I'll put this back in my collection as a working Mac Plus as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. I've started doing this recently and I'd really appreciate it if you do. That tells YouTube to kind of spread the word about my videos and really helps a lot. So if you, if you could just hit that like button and I thank you in advance. You can also subscribe or become a patron. You'll see their names uh, at the end of the end credits. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye everybody. 
patrons receive ad-free and early access to content after the episode commentary, and of course, your name in the credits. If you liked that episode, here's a few more you might enjoy, and I thank you for your support. End of line.